Well, hello everybody. Try to call Steve Green here. Getting ready for an expedition. Ah, uh, actually not really. But uh, today, whoop, ooh, it's cold. Today I wanted to talk about a person who rode a an ice fat tire tricycle to the South Pole. And I'm getting cold just thinking about it. So I got my North Face Park on. Yeah, okay, stand by and we'll talk a little bit about Maria Leierstein. So anyway, Maria Leierstein from Wales. <clears throat> She's kind of my heroine, you know? I mean, and sh she is the one who inspired me to want to get a fat tire tricycle back when ICE only had made one for her. It was custom made. She wanted to be the first person to cycle to the South Pole in Antarctica. And <clears throat> because of that, that's why ICE eventually started making the full fat. And I was one of the first guys that was bugging them about it uh, back in 2013, 2014 after, well, actually 2014, because uh, on December 10, no, December 27th, December 27th, 2013, <laughs> Maria Leierstein from Wales peddled a human power recumbent fat tire tricycle to the South Pole. She was the first person to cycle under her own power to the South Pole. She started out 10 days and almost 15 hours, 10 days and 15 hours ahead of that. So on Christmas Eve, Christmas and all that, her family was uh, celebrating without her. She was down in Antarctica uh, freezing. <laughs> but anyway, so I wanted to uh, talk to you about that in case uh, some of you uh, are not aware of what Maria did. She uh, <clears throat> has a website um, and she gives motivational talks and she promotes fitness events, <clears throat> and quite the gal, quite the gal. And uh, she wrote a book that tells about her trip on a, on a, basically it's like what morphed into the full fat tricycle <clears throat> that ICE makes, because there was such a clamoring for it. But anyway, um, that trike, she went to ICE, Inspired Cycle Engineering, and they made her this one-of-a-kind custom trike. And uh, people loved it, people ate it up, and ICE took the plunge in 2014 and actually started making, designing and making these things. Not exactly the way she had written it, but basically what they took was an ICE Sprint, and they heavily modified it. I mean, this thing is really modified. It had the big fat tires on it, and it looked like what is now a nice full fat, except, you know, it was black. And the boom, um, when she was uh, preparing for this, she was getting like uh, pins and needles, you know, like hot spots in her feet, because her feet were up too high, so they actually put in a special boom that, instead of being straight, it curved at the end, and you'll see all this. And of course, she couldn't wear regular cycling shoes because in Antarctica, with those howling winds and the freezing temperatures, she had to have super uh, insulated uh, boots. But uh, anyway, so um, I am going to show you some photographs of her somewhere in this video. I might be showing them now, I don't know, or I might show them at the end. I just come out give these talks and then I figure out where to put all the post-production stuff afterwards and I'm going to show some clips of her movie. Now she made uh, a 
45 minute full length documentary starting from when she went to ICE and shows her, they were building, constructing this uh, uh, fat tire trike for her. And <clears throat> once they got it built, it uh, shows Chris Parker, the co-owner of, uh, of ICE with uh, Neil, uh, Neil Selwood is the co-owner with Chris Parker. Well, but Chris Parker brought out Maria's uh, trike to her in a big, in an ICE van <laughs> and unloaded it and, uh, you know, and showed her how to use it and everything. And, oh, and part of her training, she did a lot of training for this trip. Part of her training uh, to see if she was dressed properly for the cold, there was this big giant freezer at some market or food storage place where she lived. And uh, she worked it out with them to where they put the trike in this freezer. I mean, this is a big giant freezer. It's like a warehouse, but it's like, I don't know how many degrees below zero. Um, it is, but she went in there and for several hours, she, they put the trike on a uh, rollers. <laughs> and she pedaled in there and she just experimented with her clothing, being able to use her hands, being able to eat, uh, filming things. And you know, so she was in this freezer for hours on end. And you know, it's the kind of thing where uh, if you're not dressed for Antarctica, you couldn't even survive in the freezer, you would perish in there. So that was part of her training. And, uh, oh, anyway, yeah, and if you uh, are interested in her documentary, you can get that on her website, marialairstown.com, I think is what it is. And I'll put links to all this stuff somewhere down below if you're watching this on YouTube <clears throat> or whatever. And so you can get her book, and I'll put a link to the Amazon UK uh, and the Amazon United States or North America where they sell the book. And then if you want her movie, uh, the 45 minute documentary, you can pay her a fee on her website and then it gives you a passcode and you can download the movie to your computer. Now I did that right away back uh, as soon as that movie came out in 2014 or whenever, early 2014. Uh, <clears throat> I downloaded it and I have a copy of it on my computer and that's what I'm going to take snippets from to show you at the end here and what you can do too if you have a are able to record DVDs in your computer which I am you just get a recordable DVD you pop it in and you have to you know have a DVD um, a software type thing and then you can copy it onto the CD so you can watch it on your big screen television and in the living room instead of your, your computer screen. So anyway, Maria Leierstein from Wales, I think you'll enjoy it. It's, it's certainly a feat uh, that uh, nobody else has done. Nobody else has tricycled with the South Pole, and certainly even if they did, they'd be number two at this point because Maria already did it eight years ago, almost eight years ago. Alrighty, folks. Stand by and see whatever else comes after I get done yakking at you here. See ya. Antarctica, 
the end of the earth. It's a frozen desert which has challenged the minds and bodies of generations of explorers ever since the 19th century. In 2010, Maria Leerstam from the Vale of Glamorgan decided to go on a bike ride to the South Pole. It wasn't a completely new idea. Others had tried and failed. I knew that nobody had ever done it. I'm not going the standard route that most people go from Hercules Inlet. I've been doing a lot of research as to what I think is going to be the, the best route to go, and, um, and I, now I think i found the, the best route. Two years after Maria came up with the concept of a bike fit for Antarctica, she gets to see the real thing for the first time. After being built in Cornwall, it's delivered to her home in South Wales. Hi, Chris. Hi, hi. Nice to see you. Hi, hi. Show me what you've got. Yeah, come, right, come this way. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Look at this. <gasps> Fully loaded, ready to go. Wow. Yeah, today, you're... Oh, that is such a good position. It's much, much easier than a mountain bike would be because she's got the stability of having three wheels means if she... She can ride easily at one mile an hour. No wobbling around, no trying to keep her balance. She'll just keep moving. If the hills are steep enough, she will, she will have the gears to just power her way up them. If this machine fails, she fails. So it's got to survive. OK, so we've got a standard mountain bike size chain set at the front. The only slight difference is these chain rings are, are oval, not round. Okay. So I've not seen that before. Yeah. As you hit bottom dead centre, or the, the bit of the power stroke where you can't yeah. actually push on and get any forward, it changes it to a small, an easy gear. And, you and that, as you move forward yeah. into the, in the middle of the power stroke, you're in a big gear. Yeah. So you're making, making movement when you've got the strength, and when you haven't, it's in an easy gear to get you into the next power yeah. phase. So the killer question is that going to get me up Leverett Glacier? That will get you up Leverett Glacier. Yes. No trouble at all. With the terrain training mastered, it's time to test temperatures a little closer to those found at the pole. Maria's going to spend a whole day training in a deep freeze at a food distribution centre in Portsmouth. It'll go down to about minus 30 in the minus 28, minus 30 in the industrial freezers. So it'll be a good test of the clothing, making sure nothing's rubbing, making sure there's no zips that are rubbing, or you know, some smallest of things like that that on a long expedition can really start to wear you down. Maria was always the explorer from a very early age. Out of our two daughters, she was the one that was always went ahead to see what, what was around the next corner. So that's in her nature. Her sister always pushed her, Maria, you go first, have a look over the, the hill, is it safe for us to go? Yeah, and yeah. So we, were, yeah. we, were, we knew how it was going to turn out. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we used to go into bed and thinking, oh, I wonder where Maria is <laughs> now, you know, she's in a tent on an ice cliff somewhere or you know, something like that, and we, we snug in bed. 